G'day guys, Tim Robards here. Now, some of you may know me as the sports chiropractor, some may know me as uh, the TV guy, the actor, and some of you may know me from my days in the early 2000s, riding my scooter around Newcastle University. But um, either way, the one thing we all have in common is that we're part of the Newcastle University alumni. And the team there have reached out to me to put together for you guys a, a mixture of stretches, um, some educational stuff on how to set up your office at home now that a lot of us are working from home. How to get you through this time, keeping your spine healthy, your mind healthy, and keeping, um, keeping us moving forward as well, mentally and emotionally. So the first thing I'm gonna kick off with is it's, a, it's an assessment. This is, it's really good to have outcome measures. You know, we can feel quite stuck when we're, we're quarantining at home or we're, we're self-isolating at home. And it's easy to feel like we're not moving forward. Now, with all these stretches and mobility exercises I'm gonna give you, I wanna give you an outcome measure, a little assessment you can do beforehand and then we can test it afterwards. And you can test it week on week. Now, this is one of the, the simplest tests I do in the clinic with, with my patients and clients. And it is simply looking at, one of the things when we sit at a desk all day, we get really tight in the upper body. And then we get locked up in the thoracic, our neck has to do this to look at the screen, and we get jammed in the neck, we get headaches, neck issues, lower back issues, and all that. So this is a test that kind of tests out shoulder mobility, thoracic mobility, and lower body knee mobility, all in one test. So look at yourself and go, right, when was the last time I actually squatted, you know, bumped the ground? It's something that we, we do as kids. We used to, you know, as kids, we sit and we play with our toys and stuff like this. But as adults, we forget how to do it. We, we generally don't sit any lower than uh, the toilet, the bed, the car seat. We don't ever get any lower, so we get weak in that lower area. This test is gonna test it out and see whether you've been looking after yourself. If not, then it'll show you how you can improve on it. So the first one we do, we go back against the wall like this. We're gonna get our toes about, about two inches from the wall, and we're gonna have our feet at squat distance apart. So about just over, around about shoulder width apart. Toes pointed out a little bit, and we're gonna have our arms about twice shoulder width apart, palms on the walls. So we start feet in the right position, palms twice shoulder width, the elbows must stay dead straight. And what we're trying to do is we're gonna slide down the wall and you wanna find at what point we're gonna try, and these will go wide, we're gonna try and go all the way down and all the way back up. Now, if you're getting to a point where a lot of people get stuck around here, they feel like they're gonna fall backwards or they feel like they've gotta bend their elbows to get down, and that's usually a sign have a couple of things. So it's either a lack of thoracic mobility, so you're lacking that extension through the thoracic, and also it can be hip, core, and ankle issues not enabling you to get your, um, your bum right down to the ground. So that's a really good assessment as to where you're at and something you can um, come back and test yourself after you do all these other stretches. Now before I give you these stretches, I want to go through the cause. What is the cause of our neck issues and things? I mean, you can come in to see me as a chiropractor and I can crack away a massage and all this, but if you just go back to doing what the cause of the issue in the first place was, we're just going to go around in circles. The usual cause is the way we sit or our desk set up. So I'm going to use the old piano stool to show you the basics of how to sit properly. Now when we sit normally, we're taught Usually in school, sit upright, 90 degrees at the knee and the hips and, and like this. Now to sit upright like this, I'm constantly fighting gravity. Gravity is trying to push me down like this. I have to use all the muscles in my lower back and my hip flexors to keep me upright like this. As I start to fatigue, if I do this for half an hour, gradually I'm gonna go, oh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna fall into this slump. I'm gonna have to, to continue to look forward. I'm gonna have to jam my head up like this. And then usually the lower I get, the higher I've got to hold my hands for the keyboard. So if I was to lock in like this and stand up, I actually look like this. I look like some kind of Tyrannosaurus Rex. So what you want to do is you want to get yourself, move yourself about halfway along the chair as you normally would. And you need to get to a position where you can get your knees lower than your hips. So you want your quads to angle forward a little bit. 
This will kind of resemble, I guess, um, it's, like, it's like you're riding a horse. You never see someone riding a horse with their knees right up here galloping like this because they'd smash their lower back. Their knees are lower than their hips. They're straddling the horse and you're able to maintain this position in the body. Because what happens is the muscles through the front actually bring the pelvis around and they keep it around by more of a pulling action rather than purely from contraction from the muscles in the back. So you're able to feel, like if you feel under your bum there, you'll feel your sit bones actually connecting with the chair instead of rolling back onto your sacrum the whole time. And even if you've got a backrest, usually most people, they still roll back onto their sacrum, lay onto the backrest, and they're, they're not actually sitting on their sit bones. As soon as we get onto our sit bones, we can maintain this for so much longer. Even though you still should have breaks, this is a lot more maintainable. There's a lot less muscles having to work against gravity. So you won't fatigue as easily either. So we, this is how we sit right. Generally, the neck and everything will just flow. If we have the lower body down here in the right position, the neck will naturally be in the right position. It's only once we do this, does the neck then have to do this. So from there, we're gonna set up the desk. Now, I'm going to use my piano as my keyboard. So what you wanna do is, is make sure first, with this, I may need to go a little higher. So if you're working from home on a um, you know, dining room table or something like that, you may be able to use a cushion. Get yourself in that position where you can still have that angle of the knees sloping down, knees lower than the hips. Now, the angle here should be 90 degrees or more. We shouldn't be up like this and have the desk too high. If the desk is too high, try and boost yourself up as much as you can or try and move to a lower desk. But ideally, we're at this nice relaxed position, 90 degrees or less here. And then you want to have your head up nice and straight. If you're on a laptop, then ideally we put that up onto a couple of books so that the top third of the laptop is straight in front of our eyes. But for that you would need a wireless keyboard. Now that could be a really good investment if you're gonna be here for the next six months. If you are just still on a laptop and the screen's down there, at least try to get everything else right. And then when you're looking down at it, use your eyes to look down rather than your head. So instead of stuck like this, just Keep your head up right, look down with your eyes, and work like that. That's kind of the simplest and best way you can set up your desk, just with using what's around the home. Now, I'm gonna take you guys into some of the key stretches. One of the best, well, this is a stretch, but it's also a strengthening exercise. Most of the time, we get really weak in these muscles between our shoulder blades. They're constantly stretched, and they're still on, but they're just, they're on all the time. They're not getting blood flow through them. That's why you get so tight, you get trigger points. They're not actually working on and off. They're just constantly kind of on holding in a stress position. So this is called the wall angle. The way this one works, we go feet, so, knees softly bent, feet, shoulders apart, bum on the wall, shoulders, head. Arms go up like this. We want to keep the elbow and the fingers contacting the wall the whole time. Now, Ideally, we start, the easy version is we just go straight up till we get straight elbows and back down. Now the elbow and the hands has to stay in contact with the wall. Most people with elbows want to come off the wall if you're really tired and out the back. You have to keep the elbows on the wall. If you can only get to there, just go to there. Work through that range. Don't let the elbows come off. If you can't do two arms, just focus on one. Focus on one at a time. Get that one good, get that one good, and then eventually you'll be able to do it together. So it starts to look like this. You breathe out as you push up. You don't want to go too wide, and you don't want to go too close. You just want to go up and end up in a V. Now, the next step to this, what we're aiming for, is we want to actually roll the pelvis back and get the lower back flat on the wall and have no gap in there. So some people really struggle with this, but essentially, it's just like we're trying to roll our pelvis back. It's almost like someone's trying to pull your belt up. Even if you have to slump for a little bit, slump, get that lower back stuck on the wall, then start to peel the upper back up, get the shoulders on, neck on, bum on. Now test and see, have I still got that lower back pushed in? What you'll find is the tummy 
draws right in because it's the abs trying to keep it a little slight bend in the knees, but it's the abs pulling that lower back into the wall. Then, so we've taken out all that lumbar extension and we're creating pure thoracic extension. So the arms go back up, elbows on, fingers on. We keep that lumbar spine pushed against the wall. You can start with one arm and you can sort of feel. So as you push up, your lower back wants to come off the wall. You've got to push and squeeze all the muscles between the shoulder blades to keep the elbow on the wall as you push up and keep the lower back on the wall. So that's this co-contraction between we're trying to pull in here, but we're trying to extend the upper back at the same time. So you find all these muscles in here, are trying to, it's like a rusty hinge, they're trying to get some extension in our thoracic, in our upper back, that's been so locked up for so long. So, lower back on the wall, let's go in for two hands. I usually do three sets of eight. So big breath in, and then, it's that bit that's really hard, relax the neck. As you're pushing up, you're making sure that as I push up, my abs are working really hard to keep my lower back flat against the wall. Now you'll see me in the gym doing this with no weights in my hand, but I'm going And that's essentially really, we're working some of these muscles. They're not pushing against gravity or a heavy weight, they're literally pushing against other tight muscles. So you're getting a stretch and strengthening at the same time. Eventually, what may seem really hard right now will gradually become easier, but this is one of those ones that, kind of like brushing your teeth and flossing your teeth. This exercise, the wall angel, is one of the best exercises you can do. When you get off the wall, you've done three sets of eight, you will feel so tall, so elongated, you'll probably grow an inch, and your head will feel like it's more over your body instead of you know that forward head posture that people walk around with because they're stuck at the desk like this. It'll extend you and put your head straight over your body. So that is one of the best exercises you can do the wall angel. The next one is because we constantly sit in this flex position in our hip, our hip flexor shortens. Really good way to strengthen that is to, we're gonna drop down, we're gonna take a knee, you're gonna flatten off the back foot so we don't put too much pressure on the knee. What we wanna do is we wanna have a straight line from the knee through the hip, through the shoulder. So it's not like a normal stretch where you're right forward like that, which you might have done playing footy or whatever. It's, it's straight above the knee like this. Now what we do is we're going to contract and squeeze the hell out of that glute so tight and you'll get this backwards rotation of the pelvis. So forwards would be forward like this and you'd feel that arch in your tummy stick out. Backwards, you're gonna, it's like your belly button's drawing in, the pelvis is rolling backwards. You're gonna squeeze that, whack yourself in the bum, hold that for 15 seconds. Now this is a, an agonist antagonist contraction. The harder we squeeze the glute, the more we get the hip flexor to switch off and actually stretch. And you should feel a stretch through here without even having to go into that full hip flexor stretch because you've got so much rotation in there and you might find that the glute holds for five seconds and then it starts to weaken. A lot of us have got weak inhibited glutes. You want to continue keep punching yourself in the bum. If it goes a bit floppy again, remind it, squeeze it, breathe and hold that. Hold for 15 seconds, then do the other side. That is a really good way to switch our glutes on, but also switch our hip flexors off and stretch them at the same time. So then when you're standing up straight up, the hip flexors aren't kind of pulling us into this, this duck bum position. We're getting that nice stretch through there. Pelvis becomes more neutral as well. That's the second last stretch. The last stretch is the Jefferson Curl. This is again, a mixture of a stretch and an active motion. So with this one, what we're trying to do is remind our body that we have all these different vertebra. A lot of us, we get, we get stuck and our body starts to perceive that, you know, maybe T1 to T12 is just one big block. It moves as one block. We can bend a little bit over the belly button, but that's it. You should really be able to bend every little vertebra at different levels. So we're gonna start with the neck and we go C1, C2, C3, C4, C5. Keep all this normal, neutral. 
T6, T7, T1, T2, T3, T4, T5, T6. So work your way down each little vertebra. Then we get into, so the lumbar, I still haven't really bent through the lumbar here. We're gonna get into the lumbar. So you get L1, L2, L3, L4, L5. You can use your hands to support. Go all the way down and then let it hang. Then we're gonna start curling up. So we're gonna leave our body hang, but we're just gonna start one at a time. L5, L4, L3, L2, L1. Then we're gonna go into the thoracic. T12, T11, T10, T, T9, T, T8, T7, T6. All the way up to our neck. C7, C6, C5, C4, C3, C2, T1. So that, as you put it together, will start to look smooth. It'll be Nice, smooth roll down. Make sure as you get to here, don't start bending at the hips here. Keep the hips forward, curl down, 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 down. Keep the hips there, and then slide all the way down. Same, you come back up, hips are forward, and slowly work your way back up. That reminds the brain, as you get better and better at it, it's like a rusty hinge. We're just trying to get our spine, each level, just moving again, instead of it having all these big blocks in it. So it's a really nice one, but you want to keep some intra-abdominal pressure. So as you're going down, you can do a bit of a kss, it's like a car tire as you're letting out some air. You want to have some intra-abdominal pressure to help support the spine, so you can do a bit of a As you go through, it may sound a little silly, but you'll get to understand that you need that intra-abdominal pressure to support the back. You can have your hands slide down as well, especially if you've got some, um, some back injuries to start with. Now, if you do have any injuries through this, just always just take it easy, support, just take it one bit at a time. You may find at the moment, you can go to here, and that's it, and that's enough for you. Just take it one step at a time. So, that's pretty much it, you know. I think, um, this all is to help you guys to work from home and to, to get the most out of, um, just to keep you feeling productive, keep your, your mind switched on, keep your body healthy whilst we're in isolation. Now, it's really easy to feel like we're, we're a little stuck, you know, in this, this moment. You might be out of work, work might be on hold. Um, life, the pace of life has slowed down a bit, definitely for a lot of us. And it is easy to feel stuck, like we're not really moving forward. But one of the things, you've got to remember that this can be a time where we just binge on Netflix and we, you know, life goes on hold. Or it can be a time where we actually continue to learn, we continue to develop, we continue to develop our bodies. You know, we may not be able to go to our normal CrossFit gym or yoga sessions or whatever, but it's a time to learn new things. So take some time to learn this stuff, get the basics right. So when you come out of this, you're coming from a, a healthier foundation, physically, mentally, emotionally, getting this meditation. There's so many things out there, so much free advice, so much free knowledge you can get. But then also from a, I guess from a work point of view, um, you know, it is a time to increase our qualifications, to increase our knowledge, our skill base, our motivation. You may, you may want to learn a language, whatever it is, anything that can help you to become more employable after this if you're not in a job right now or to increase your value so that down the track you can be paid even more because you're worth more because you've got more knowledge so it is definitely a time that we can continue to move forward and not feel stuck so i urge you to to look for how can i continue to um, you know to have a checklist each day to keep me on point how can i push through this and come out um, you know, better, stronger, smarter, wiser, more inspired, more knowledgeable, and not just come out in six months as I was, or even worse off than I was six months ago. So I think there's um, there's so much that we can do, there's so much that we can do, we can inspire others, keep inspiring the other, you know, the, the Newcastle University alumni, inspire your friends, inspire people you work with. And uh, I, I thank you for the, for the, the privilege to be able to, to do this, to share some knowledge, and I hope that you guys put it to good use and we all come out of this bigger, better, faster, stronger, smarter, healthier, wiser. <laughs> Thanks, guys.